It's pretty well accepted that the doubling of the first homeowner grant stemmed the fall in property prices during the GFC in 2008-2009, but what was arguably more important and sometimes overlooked was the dramatic return of confidence in May 2009 when non-first home buyers started to buy back into the market. I'm going to go through some examples of this in this video using data from SQM Research. Now, Louis, we'll start with you. Sydney scheduled to have its biggest auction day yesterday. That's right, Natalie. What we happened? had 750 properties go to auction yesterday, uh, and the clearance rate, as reported by various bodies, came in at about 53%. In my opinion, the real clearance rate came in in the 40s. There were actually a lot of unreported results. So, either way, it wasn't a great result. No. Uh, what do you so mean, what real would you call clearance rate? Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. OK, sorry. so during the boom time, so if we look back at, say, 2007, 2009, we were getting clearance rates in the 70s. Mm. Right. OK, so when you're getting a clearance rate in the 50s and the 40s, that's a pretty weak market. What are the unreported, sorry? What was the discrepancy between the official yeah. clearance rate and what you estimate to be the actual clearance rate? Well, I'm glad you asked that because it's not, it's not well discussed in the media. But look, uh, you actually... These auction results come from real estate agents. Yep. Now, real estate agents tend to want to report good news. Mm -hmm. When you have a real estate agent that's perhaps heavily reliant on auctions as a mean of business, and they have a bad day, they'll generally will not report to the reporting bodies. They won't ah. tell the reporting bodies that they had, say, a 100% failure rate. They just won't ring in at all. Really? So it's, not take their... it's not mandatory. It's not mandatory. It's totally voluntary. Out. That's right. exactly right. Wow. And on top of that, ah. you have certain reporting bodies out there um, who basically go come from the industry. They represent right. real estate agents, and it's really not in their interest to report mm. auctions as a bad way to sell. Right. Wow. So it's real not You've got to be careful about those public clearance something. rates you see. Uh, house prices in Australia could fall by as much as 25%. What are your thoughts on that? Yep. Look, we start, as Louis is saying, and look, I've got, I really um, take on board what Louis says because he's about the only independent property researcher in the game at the moment. Um, so he analyses it really well. As he said, most of the others have a vested interest. So a quick recap on the events of 2008. In March, Bear Stearns became insolvent, which led into the start of the GFC in July. But it wasn't until September that the RBA cut rates for the first time. Soon after this, US bank Lehman Brothers also collapsed. So, on the 14th of October 2008, the government doubled the first homeowner grant, initially only for six months. Despite this, auction listings during the spring period were very low. With the distraction of Christmas, on the 18th of December 2008, the government introduced new rules to make it easier for foreign investors to buy property in Australia. But by March 2009, the start of the autumn auction season, prices were still falling and listings were still low despite record high levels of first home buyer activity. And finally, after an interest rate cut to a record low 3% in April, it's around May that the property market stopped falling and found its floor. When the first home owner grant was doubled in mid-October, there was a massive jump in first home buyer activity. While there was first home buyer activity in every suburb, some suburbs are obviously more affordable than others and as such saw a lot more first home buyers. The result is a characteristic decline of stock on the market as properties were bought up by first home buyers between the months of October 2008 and 2009. First home buyers of Melbourne tended to purchase more affordable existing houses in suburbs about 30 to 40 minutes drive out of the CBD along main highways. The suburbs include Wantrina, Caroline Springs, Churnside Park, Greensboro, Taylors Lakes and Frankston. Similarly in Brisbane, first home buyers purchased more affordable houses in Forest Lake, Inala, Logan City, Springfield Lakes, North Lakes and Toowoomba. And of course the same effect was seen in more affordable suburbs around Perth like Belhus, Atwell, Forest Field, Port Kennedy, Rockingham, The Spectacles, Thornlea and Bayswater. North and south of Sydney, first home buyers bought houses on the central coast in Budgiewoy and Copacabana, on the northern beaches in Belrose and units in Collaroy and Manly. On the southwest, it was suburbs Norellan and Campbelltown 
and finally units in Wollongong. But by far and away the majority of first home buyer activity was seen in Sydney's west in suburbs like Seven Hills, Beecroft, Blacktown, Chester Hill, Glendenning, Eastern Creek, Glenwood, Greenacre, Hustle Grove, Padstow, Punchbowl, Quakers Hill, Stanhope Gardens, Lakemba, Parramatta and Rose Hill. By December it had been 10 months since the start of the GFC, but despite vigorous first home buyer activity since October, the property market still remained depressed, as evidenced by low auction listings. So, in the attempt to kickstart the market with the distraction of Christmas, the government changed Foreign Investment Review Board rules so temporary visa holders, including students, could buy up second-hand dwellings. The changes did not require notification of sales to be made to the board and the $300,000 cap on prices was removed. Coming out of Christmas, when the property market normally started up again around February, total number of properties for sale at auction were down. In March, Melbourne's listings were about half that of the previous year and similarly low listings were seen for other major cities. But despite the low listings, first home buyers ensured the clearance rate on these entry level properties were running at all time highs. It wasn't enough to help the market where it counted and on March 31st APM announced average house prices were down almost 4% year on year. And as such, on April 7th, the RBA found it necessary to cut rates to a record 49 year low of 3%. April also saw first home buyer participation peak at 27%, and with the temptation of lower interest rates, some non first home buyers re entered the market. The 4th of May was when the Australian Bureau of Statistics first issued house price data for 2009, indicating capital cities had fallen about 2% for the start of the year and almost 7% year on year. It was the biggest fall recorded by the ABS in 23 years. And May is where a significant number of investment properties were listed on the market. Property listings spiked in popular investment property suburbs of Sydney, close to the CBD. Suburbs such as Zetland, Walleye Creek, Alexandria, Paddington, Piermont, Redfern, Ultimo, Camperdown, Stanmore, Dulwich Hill, Marrickville and Maroubra. In Sydney's north, suburbs with investment properties included Pennant Hills, French's Forest, Linfield, North Ryde, Milsons Point, Wollstonecraft, Collaroy, DY, Freshwater and Manly. In Sydney south, investment properties were listed on the market in Blakehurst, Arncliffe, Beverly Hills, Cronulla, particularly Gaimia and Mortdale, Rockdale, Sutherland and Torella. The effect was less obvious in Sydney's west in suburbs Auburn, Reevesby, Dundas, Epping, Guildford and Newington. And of course investors put their properties up for sale in Melbourne with houses in Lilydale, Watsonia and Albert Park units in East Melbourne, North Melbourne and Melbourne CBD. You'll notice that investment properties are still up for sale in Altona North, Brooklyn, Chadstone, Thornbury, Doncaster, Templestowe, Gladstone Park, Heidelberg, Essendon and Pascoe Vale. I think these were investment properties because the spike in stock was mainly units 20 minutes out from the CBD. They were listed Australia-wide but mainly in capitals and of course in seen in some suburbs of Melbourne, these investment properties still remain unsold. Now, it's my opinion that because of the falling market, these investment properties were listed for sale. Data released by the ABS for the first time in May the 4th, 2009 showed a falling market. They certainly weren't listed all of a sudden for the purpose of selling to first home buyers because first home buyers had been buying since October. It was the last month of the autumn auction period to get out of the market before winter arrived. Perhaps the combination of lower interest rates and falling values quickly made negative gearing unattractive. But of course, I'm not entirely sure, so if you have a different idea why property listings spiked here, 
please leave a comment at the end of this video for myself and other viewers to see. If so, this could be a precedent for when negative gearing fails due to the combination of decline in capital gain and reduced tax advantage with lower interest rates. It's a potential tipping point for the property market as we go into 2012 approaching the same set of circumstances.